He projected so good. He looked like an introvert on stage. The quietest in person are usually the people that project the loudest. And vice versa, the people who are loudest are usually the Welcome to Serene Vocal Studio. I'm so excited to have you join us today for a very special series that we're putting together. This is my friend Danny. Hi. He is fantastic. Are oh, you gonna tell him about yourself a little bit? I'm just an actor, director, just a little choreographer, just a little bit of everything, just life experience. That's why you're here. Yeah. Just I to have I, some fun. I have a little bit of everything, so I, I know what people are looking for. I know the anxieties that actors feel and actors who are not dancers, dancers who are not actors. Oh. All that stuff, so we're going to talk about that. Love it. Danny and I know each other from theater, yes. right? We've done two shows together. We did Sweeney Todd together in 21, then we just did White Christmas. Our first topic we're going to talk about is what are directors looking for? Oh, maybe we should tell them about this series a little bit, about why are we doing this series? I think that would be great because this series is pretty much to help any actors who are trying to think of the answers to these questions. How do I prepare for a callback? What do I do? What do I prepare for my audition, the callback, the sides, the songs? What does a director want? Who should I be focusing on in the audition process? And why am I not getting cast? I feel like these are all questions that every actor has at one point or the other. So we're hoping to address these questions and find some answers because there's no cookie cutter answer when it comes down to it. We hope to simplify it a little bit so you know how to adjust your audition and callback process. Yeah, so this is our audition series. And it will be as long as- no, As, as long, long as the questions keep flowing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about what is a director looking for? Now, why is this an important question? In theater, directors have a directorial vision. If you want to go to the school for it, whether you do a community, high school, or go on college and become a professional theater actor, directors always have a vision. And so what you want to think about is what is the director's vision? Now, that you can go into the whole philosophy of, oh, I'm going to interpret the story this way. The basic level interpretation is, what is this show going to look like in my eye and the audience's perspective? Our job is to think, what is the director thinking and what story are they trying to tell? That's a little bit trippy because I've heard before that you're not supposed to get into other people's thoughts because then you can have like anxieties come yeah. up. Like you never know what somebody's actually thinking. Yeah. So as actors, we have to do our best to basically guess what yeah. that is. Yeah, and what, what we're trying to do is not tell you read the director's mind, but it's helped you give a general understanding of what most directors are thinking about and what their thought process is. Because every director is different. Just how every actor is different and every story is different, every director is going to run things a different way. Some directors, you're like, I love this director and I want to work with him every single time. Others, you're like, good experience, let's not do that again. Good learning experience. Yeah, there we are. Let's there we move are. on from yeah. that. That was not super fun. How would you say is the best way to hypothesize what a director is looking for? If it were me, I would, one, look at the show. Because obviously, you're auditioning for a show that you're passionate about. Look at the past shows and try to do some research of your own. Like, what type of shows has this director produced? Is it their first time? Are they a veteran and like someone who's been in the business for 50 years and you're gonna be walking in there fighting against 50 years of experience? Because one is more intimidating than the other and I can guarantee it's not the person with 50 years of experience. Not the 50? Not why, the 50. Why not? Because experience, they know what they're looking for and they know how to run a smooth rehearsal. First time true. directors, you run into a lot more issues, a lot more problems, and those are the directors you usually don't want to go work with again. Which is sad because yeah. they need the experience. Exactly, and it's, we don't want to hold, hold it against them, but because it's a learning process for them to be a director, sometimes as actors we get a little, I didn't enjoy that process, so I don't want to go back, even though they learn, they grow, mm -hmm. and they're going to do better. So that's a, that's a, where we're, our humanity shows, of, mm, you know, our pickiness. Every show is going to have some level of I had this experience and I didn't like it. Like mm -hmm. that was really like, ooh, cringy. Mm -hmm. And the great thing is if they are good directors, they learn from it. We discussed that directors, like from director to director, they kind of have an inter, like a, a network, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How close is this network here where we live in Utah Valley? Oh, it is, they talk. They talk a lot. <laughs> are we talking like, just friends, like Facebook groups, actual director, like... Uh, and director to director. It's more of like a conversation, okay, I would okay, say. Okay. So I would say... Just like actor to actor is now yes. going, hey, let's talk about the director. Did we and like her? Did we hate her? Did we love him? Did we hate him? What's exactly. happening? What happens is I've actually had, because I'm a director as well, I'm assistant directing some stuff at some other theater companies, and I'm also a director at a school. <gasps> With, at a school, I don't talk to anyone but myself. You're just so others. busy over uh, there. It's, You're it's, just so busy. Yeah, it's not a good thing. If you audition 
and you are either whether first time or a big name, your directors are going to ask your past directors, hey, how do they work? How's their memorization? How is their attitude during rehearsal and during performance? That will follow you. For better or for worse, that's going to follow you. If you are a hard worker, we're memorized ahead of everyone else, you're going above and beyond, you're trying to help other people, great, fantastic. The directors are gonna love you, gonna boost your chances. It's not gonna guarantee it because sometimes in the mix of things, there may be a better actor. So ah. if the director, you're just having a bad day and you audition, your voice cracks and callbacks, your voice cracks, they'll be like, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what I need. But then they'll talk to other people and if they hear, yeah, they were a diva, that's gonna taint you for a long time until, oh. until, or unless you find a director who's very believing in second chances and you have a chance to redeem yourself. But that is, that is hard because a yeah. lot of times directors are gonna say, oh, this person was a diva and that's gonna keep pursuing. Mm -hmm. You may have the best voice in the world, you may be a phenomenal actor, but directors want to work with people who they can direct, not people who try to run the thing themselves. Because their vision oftentimes is different than yours because they're seeing the whole picture, not just your character. That kind of, I feel like that's coming from the direction of you have a reputation, you mm -hmm. have worked with people, but mm -hmm. what if you're brand new and trying to either come back to theater yes. or break into theater? I feel like here in Utah, we have more competition than other places, we do. than most places, we because do. we have a huge amount of talent in the adult realm, mm -hmm. in the teenager realm, even in the older, like people, like people over 40, we have a lot of really talented actors and actresses in that range as well, not to mention all these kids. I guess I would say for the people who are just trying to break into it, keep trying. Because what it comes down to is you don't have that reputation. So one, you got a clean slate. That's gonna help you out more than you know. It's gonna be a little bit harder to break into because you don't have that resume. Because if you haven't yeah. done a lot of shows and you're breaking into it, like I just got back into acting myself after about 10 year break. And that was Sweeney Todd back in um, October of 21. Before then I was directing stuff. I was performing, just not theater. Do you think directors care how many shows you have listed on your resume? I do not think so. Mm -hmm. I think- What do they care? like? If they're looking at somebody mm -hmm. who's more like newer or coming mm -hmm. into it again, do they just glance and then like take it for face value? From my experience, both as a director and talking to other directors, picking their brains, because the way to become a better director, one is experience, but also gaining experience and learning and asking questions to those who've gone before. Similar to being an actor, what did you do? Just asking those questions. My mm -hmm. honest answer is the energy you bring into the room. It's a fine line of confidence and arrogance. You gotta be confident in, in auditions. You gotta know, I can do this. You gotta believe in yourself. But you can't walk in there thinking, <laughs> I'm gonna get the role. Take your seats, don't worry, I've got this. <laughs> There's a fine line. I now, don't know, I kinda wanna see you come into an audition with that attitude. <laughs> no, I don't. That'll just guarantee the role I don't want for my next audition. <laughs> That's true. So I'm trying That's not, true. I'm trying not to have that role. You do have to have a, a, a a little bit of arrogance for it, especially oh, yeah. in the beginning of that show. Oh yeah, 100%. Do, we, do you want to tell what show you're... So my next audition that I want to go for is Beast from Beauty and the Beast. It helps that, you know, I'm dull. I'm and... pretty sure your head was probably on yeah. the camera. Yeah, so it helps that I'm tall, it helps that I'm big, it helps that my voice, at least my singing voice, can be a lot deeper and richer than my oh, speaking worry. voice. Your speaking voice is... Definitely has resonance to yeah. it. Well, I also have, I'm also can hit high C in Music of the Night if I really want to. Mm -hmm. So I, I, have a, I have a range. But, so I want to be Beast now. So if We I, all want you to be Beast. I mean, I would love to be Beast. Again, <laughs> dream roll. Dream roll right there. <laughs> but again, sometimes you don't get dream rolls. And we'll, that's a conversation for the, later in the series. Yeah. Um, but what it comes down to is you need to be able to, with your clean slate, walk in there happy, hopeful, nervous, sure, you can shake as much as you want. Because the thing I've learned, a lot of directors, not every director, but a lot of directors have a sixth sense of energy. So if you've got, yeah, again, maybe you're really good at being a psychopath and hiding all that energy, who knows, and you are arrogant, and, but mask, because I've run into that before as well. Like actors who are like, oh, they're a really nice person, and you get to know them, and you're like, oh, you're awful. <laughs> yeah, it, on stage, like on, it, not, I mean in life too, but like as an actor. Oh, okay, okay. So it's you run into it everywhere. Be confident, be happy, be hopeful, but also like 
allow yourself to be honest and nervous. That, that I think is a fine line in terms mm. of having that confidence, but then also being nervous because especially mm. for when you're in a, in a situation where you mm. walk in, you're like, I've got this, mm. I have prepared, mm. I'm ready to just nail it. Yeah. And then you walk away without the role yeah. or even a semblance of having gotten the role. Yeah. I'm not speaking from experience at all. <laughs> and you wonder, what did I do wrong? Mm. And as, as people, I think we, mm. I, I tend to like review everything. I review yeah. like, what did I do? Where did I look? Mm. Was I too flighty? Was I too nervous? Was I, and I start to go mm. over and then I'm like, and then I'm going down into this spiral. And that I think is going to be another conversation we'll have specifically about how to train our brain yes. for before, during, and after. Yes, that, so, that 100%, that is I'm, on our I'm bleeding list, into other places. But I think it's an important conversation because we do art yeah. for our mental health. Yeah, yeah 100%. But it, like it also can trash our mental health. <laughs> it's a double-edged sword. It is a double-edged sword, 100%. How do we balance this? And see, that's the thing is we go, oh. it goes back to the director's vision. Sometimes you, again, you may be the best, you may be the best voice out there, but what they're looking for doesn't fit. Again, it may be, um, simply like a resemblance thing. Like, do they look similar or do they not? So this is getting a little bit into who will they cast and yeah. type casting. And, and this goes a little bit beyond talent. Yes. Is what it's sounding like. Directors are looking for good people they want to work with. They would rather choose someone who needs a lot, needs some training and work, but is going to work hard over talent any day. There's a lot, like you said at the very beginning, there's a lot of talent. Utah is, for some reason, highly focused talent. You take a Utah Person. community theater actor, yeah. like, has three shows under the, their belt and they've been an ensemble in every single time. You send them over to Pennsylvania, California, all this stuff. Kentucky. Kentucky. They're going to be getting leads in community and regional theater. You even I know even professional theater. even professional theater. Now you won't be landing landing box office movies per se, but you're going to be making an average actor's income, which is not much, by the way. Um, yeah, but like you actually have an income yes, out of state. Exactly. Because most theaters out of Utah, from what I understand, yeah. pay. Did, well, it's also because we have a lot. Of, there's regional theaters like if you go up to Yellowstone. Oh yeah. Or or uh, yeah. even Pickleville Playhouse, they pay. Which is right on the border of Utah. Uh, it's Bear River, Bear Lake. Sorry, right Idaho Utah border. That's um, Pickleville. I've never heard Pickleville. of Pickleville. It's they they house their actors. They pay them. Now it's not no, not a lot of money, mind you. And it's just for the summer. But it is an income and it is experience. But if you want experience and you can and it's fun and financially you can make it work, go for it. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. You know exactly. So like if you're a college student, three thousand dollars for the summer that's nothing to spit at. Yeah. As an adult for family. <laughs> Can't be away, you can't be away for eight weeks while, you, while your family is at home. So that's where the that's where this right. double-edged sword comes in. Okay, so into. we were talking about typecasting. Oh, oh we, not we weren't getting going into it, but you were just saying that directors looking for yes. Sometimes once talent is already apparent, mm -hmm. there's a room full of ten people with talent in the room. That's when we're probably that's getting the, closer into typecasting. I guess, but it's also hard because so in my last show we auditioned. Oh, both my shows, my auditions are like back to back, mind you. One set of auditions, my my Beauty and the Beast auditions that for my school that I'm directing, I had out of the hundred kids that auditioned, I think sixty something auditioned for Bell. Just so, sixty. So take that into account as a director. How many people auditioned for the role you went for versus how much they cut it down? Oh, I don't know. That and that's. So, from a director's perspective, you have to make that cut. And sometimes it's a very easy cut, like, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. You, I, you're cute. You're, you're great. I can tell you're happy, but you also need to... You, you can't help but tune. I'm sorry. I ran into that a lot. Then others... It happens. It, it happens. happens. And my advice is always, keep working hard. Yeah. Here's a vocal coach, or here's a list of vocal coaches, because I have like seven that I ref refer people to. Eight, actually. So... <laughs> Plug, Glad just, I made the, the just cut. Plug, just plug in this because <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you're taking new students or not. So, it, I mean, sometimes. Sometimes. Depends it, on, it depends on if I have spots open. Exactly. It, so I'm pretty full. Actually. Exactly. I'm so really full. that's what I'm saying. The last time we talked, you were full, so I didn't refer. I didn't put you on that list. Oh. So you take it down from 65 down to the ones to 15 to be like, okay, these girls can hold a tune and they can act and they have emotion. 
And then it's like, okay, then you start comparing them, and it's like, okay, I can't have 15 people come in and sing home, because one, that's, that's gonna drive me insane. <laughs> and two, that's a long time. That's a that long is a long time. The whole song? No, no, okay. it, was like, it was like 30 seconds like, to a minute. Because that's a long song. No, it's, it's a four-minute song. song. Yeah. So then I cut it down even more, because I'm like, okay, school-wise, it's a little harder, so I was like, okay, let's get rid of the sixth graders, because you yeah. have two more years to, uh, I, middle school, by the way. So I cut out the sixth graders, because they're cute. It's a little creepy to have a literal giant who's a beast and this three foot tall sixth grader who needs to drink more milk. <laughs> and so then we narrow it down to these four. If I had the opportunity and I could have four weeks to do a show, like dates, I would have cast four different ways. Mm -hmm. 100% I would have redone the show four different ways with four different casts with four different leads. Really? Like, mm -hmm. That sounds horrible. Now, but again, it's because they all could do it. Wow. They all could do it. That's what Utah. The people who work hard, they get voice lessons, they get dance lessons, they get acting lessons. The, the crazy thing about Utah is that you have the same access to stuff as everyone else does. So to be on the same level as the people getting Hale, hey community, regional, yada, 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 they've been doing it just as much as you. So it's not you're getting the advantage to be better than them, it's you're getting the same training that they're getting. Because as an actor, we've actually sort of had a conversation about this, it's con constantly progressing, constantly growing, constantly learning. And if you're not learning or growing, you gotta find other resources and other teachers and other coaches because you can't just stagnate. If you leave high school thinking, I'm the best actor in the world, <laughs> regional theaters and community theaters are gonna slap you in the face and humble you. Yeah. I promise you. So don't think, oh, I got the lead every year in high school. I'm the best. Okay, now think how many high schools there are alone in Utah. Yeah. <laughs> did I answer the question of who will they cast? Did I ever, because I, I did, but though you didn't love the answer. I hate the answer. I know. But the thing is, it also depends on so many things. Yeah. Because the honest answer is sometimes you just get a feeling. Literally, I don't know if you want to call it instinct, sixth sense, gut instinct, whatever, like, again. See, now I want to go, okay, how do I tap into that feeling? <laughs> and see, I don't know if there's, a, there's a, one specific answer. There was two girls for Mrs. Potts. Because again, Mrs. Po uh, 65 people for Mrs. Potts, but also the, of those same 65, there was about 35 who wanted, who wanted Mrs. Potts. Okay. 65 Bell, 35 Mrs. Potts. Okay. And again, some could hold a tune, because she has a solo. She has got to have that deep, or not deep, that rich alto yes. um, Beauty and the Beast. Like that is the one of the most memorable songs of the show. Like, it may be the most iconic. It might be. I think it is. It is. Like, it's the most iconic. You, you turn on an old Disney movie, that song's playing in the background. Tale so as old as time. Beautiful. I love it. There were, we love it. I narrowed it down to two people. From 35? From 35. It was an easy Way cut. Way to go! It was an easy cut. Oh. Well, that's good. But then... I spent a half hour arguing between these two people. There's no right answer. With the other, with the, your, Bell, with Bell, your we cut, Bell, we cut it down to four people. In the callbacks, we knew who it was as soon as she opened her mouth. Whoa. It was just boom, unanimous chills, goosebumps, and we were like, that's her. That's Bell. With his pots, 20, minute, 20 to 30 minutes of deliberation, of arguments. And ultimately, I pulled the director card and I went with my gut. Are you glad you did? Oh, 100%. But the thing is, both of them could have done it. I gave the other girl an un the understudy role so, and an understudy performance date. Because I'm like, you've got the talent for it. It's just something in my gut. I cannot tell you what. She needs this. Mm. And as a, as, as a teacher, as a middle school, I don't argue with those gut instincts. Because every time I ever have, things have gone wrong. So in my gut, I was like, she needs this. And seeing her grow with that responsibility and in that role. And she was sick when she auditioned. And oh. hearing her come back not sick. Again, it is gorgeous. The sound she's able to produce. Like, I, I'm like, you could have been Belle as well. But you didn't go for it. So that's where, again, she has a range. So again, sometimes yeah. as, a, as a director, you don't have an answer. But something just says, this has to happen. And then I was like... I'm going to upset some people, I know it. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I went with my gut, and it has been amazing. Yeah. I can't explain it. Like, the chemistry of the, that group has been so supportive. Sometimes someone steps forward, and you're just like, 
I don't know why, but this is the person. Boing. Yep. And Light so, bulb. <laughs> yes. And so that's the thing is as a director, oh. you may work with someone in 20, 30 shows and it comes down to they want a certain role and you're like, I want to give it to you, but for some reason, my gut is saying this. Sometimes you just got, you, you have to make hard calls as a director. Yeah. All right. So one last thing I wanted to say is when it comes to directing, at least from a director's point of view, is that directing, casting, it's like building a puzzle. There is... You're, you have the vision, you're trying to get the puzzle piece is put together, and you may have a perfect puzzle piece, but it just doesn't fit in the vision. So are you saying, if I bought, if or if I thought the puzzle was going to look like a Wizard of Oz puzzle, but it came out to be like a, like... Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland? Exactly. And it's... I don't fit, and I prepared wrong, or it's yep. just who I am? A little bit, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes there is no answer. And that's the, and that's the hard part, is because... You're building a team and building a vision out of multiple puzzle pieces that could all fit there, but they're going out on a limb and sometimes choosing a different one. And that's the hard part as a director. Sometimes you have to make those hard calls of, I love this person as an individual. Yeah. I know they're talented. I know they can sing. I know they yeah. can act. I know they can dance, but I'm not going to choose them. And that is harder. Believe it or not, that is hard as a director. Like making that call of someone that yeah. you know, you love, you trust, but you're not casting them. That's... It's hard on the actors, 100%, yeah. but I promise you, it's hard as an act. It is hard as a director. Asking for hints, asking for tips, tricks. Um, like, what, what did I, I do wrong? What can I improve upon? What yeah. did I do wrong? That would be, I think that'd be a fair mm -hmm. question what, versus why didn't you cast me? Yes. Yeah. At all, again, that is a great question because it shows you want to improve. Yeah. It is great. Yes. But you also want to make sure you, one, phrase it the right way. Right. Two, give it time because it's gonna sting less later yes depending on your relationship with the casting committee director choreographer yada 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 and past experiences with them it can either one be a beneficial conversation of here's how you can improve um or, and they may even say we love you and if we if we could cast it double like again if i could cast two if i double cast it you would have been in the other one but we can't we only have 16 people to cast yeah. and it's a such a tiny little cast compared to Shrek with a hundred people oh, gosh. so huge, or huge cast. or Little Mermaid or Beast <clears throat> Beauty and the Beast or whatever Joseph whatever it has giant casts and ensembles when it's such a smaller cast as well yeah. that's even harder I made the joke off screen I have wrinkles and gray hair because of because of the directing right now like it is It's rough. <laughs> Just remember, they're angels when they're individually sure. with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. They yeah. really are. They really are. So, as a director, if you have a good attitude and aren't the be like, they didn't, cast, they didn't cast me because they don't like me, and bad talking, do not bad talk your directors because guess what? They'll hear about it. They will hear about it from other actors. They The word gets back to everyone. So. Be kind. Be kind. And be, I, you know, be to, be, to be fair, the the... The casting people today, they like they're all wonderful, wonderful, and I think they're gonna have a great show. Just as the the actor inside of you is also stinging a little bit. The like, actor inside human. of me is dying. It's fine. We're human. But I also, you know, for this particular okay, so this kind of goes into the next question. Yeah. What do the directors need to know about me? And now this is going to be a multi-level question because what do the directors need to know about you? They need to know about you in acting, in singing, mm -hmm. in dancing, especially if it's a dance heavy show, like musical theater. Now we're specifically, I'm going to just say, we're specifically talking musical theater, yes. not like straight up plays because we like musical theater. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. Danny's I, a dancer. Nah, I'm specifically a ballroom dancer. He's a ballroom dancer. But I've, lately I've had to learn tap dance, lyrical, jazz. It's all been thrown at me. Uh -huh. I, I was recently a swing and for White Christmas, so I had to learn tap dancing for both Bob and Phil, oh and then also ensemble tap dancing. So I went from no tap dance experience to a lot. <laughs> you know how many, um, you know how many, on, uh, not auditions, rehearsals where he's in the back Swearing. going, I hate tap so I much. I'm like, what do you mean? This is so fun. It's great when, you know, they use terminology that you don't even know. So it's a different it's like, language. Exactly. It's like you're uh, going from zero to a hundred. It's like, oh, do a falap. I'm like, flap you too. Falap, falap, falap. What? Falap you too. Cool. Great. So 
So top three things, let's just, let's just go for top three things that they need to know about you. You'd say be honest no matter what. Mm. Okay. Um, communicate conflicts because if you're gone for six weeks of the rehearsal because you oh, are... Does that happen? Uh-oh, something That's turned okay. off. That is my camera. Oh, okay. He's PC that one. Okay. Hey! Hey! So... Who does that? I did that. So I got cast, but it wasn't the role I wanted. Oh. So I was in Mamma Mia last year. That was during Mamma Mia. So, well, no, no, no. So it was a different experience. So, well, what was during Mamma Mia? The six-week, like, sabbatical. So, no, well, kind of. So I had done Beauty and the Beast again, but in an ensemble at a different theater um, in December of 21. Because we're in 2023 right now. Yeah. Oof. Wow. It's weird. Well, it's weird because we just started 2023. Yes. And, and if, you, 20, if you say 21, you're like, that's two years ago, but it wasn't really a full no. two years ago. No. You know? So it's weird. In December of 21, I was in Beauty and the Beast. And then the director there, he liked what he saw. And though I wasn't old enough for their Beast vision because they wanted a 45 year old Beast for some reason. <laughs> anyway. Um, you're never the age that, okay. No, you're... Is it a thing? I feel like I'm never the right age, like, rarely. Same. When I was 18, I'm like, I look like I'm 12. And when I was in my 20s, I'm like, I look like I'm 16. And now, in my 30s... Apparently you skipped the 20s? Like, I skipped the appar 20s! Apparently. I, I don't know. I, I, aging, age is weird. Because age it's, weird. It, it makes no sense to me. But anyway, because again, Beast, and if you look in the script, it's like, it's like 20 and 30s. Like tw early twenties to early thirties is the age or age you're supposed to play because he's a young prince, not a middle aged. Not prince. an old prince. Yeah. Well, how long has he actually been a beast for, though? Ten years. Really? Mm -hmm. He got he got cursed when he was young, and so again. Maybe he got cursed at thirty five, but I don't think that's supposed to be the case. No, it's not. Why are they casting beasts it's so be, old? It's supposed to be his twenty first birthday. Oh. Mm -hmm. So like, he would be like thirty one, maybe. Max. Max. Like he could have been eleven. What, can't cursed. can't a thirty one year old do the big? I mean, I can, and I'm tw I'm not thirty one, so hopefully. Oh. Hopefully. They just um, haven't found the right guy. Conflicts, yeah. So wow, what a tangent that was. So <laughs> anyway, View the Beast. Uh, the director, yeah, I I got it. The director is like, hey, look out for this summer because there's a there's a show I think I want you to be in, and I'm like, again, it was vague. I'm like, okay, cool. This was as a dancer. Twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. Okay. And I'm like, cool. As I'm like, cool. As probably a dancer, because that's the, all the information I got. So if you're a dancer, everybody just wants you to dance. And if you're trying to break out of being a dancer, it's basically impossible. But then I get, I hear people are like, I got into Hale Center Theater. Hale Center Theater is the Different. big paid theater here in Utah yeah. that everybody wants to be in. <laughs> so then I got cast as Sky in Mama Me, which is a great role. Love it. Fun. I never saw myself as that role, but I'm like. I had loved it. I had fun with it. Because I don't see myself as young, handsome, romantic guy getting married. So, um, and the, I, also, 13 Lines is great. 13 Lines? I <laughs> and a whole song. And a whole song, by the way. So, while I was in Mamma Mia, he was like, hey, you're going to come audition for the show? I'm like, I'm casting Mamma Mia. And he's like, he's like, really? I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, I'm, I'm a supporting role such lead. And then he's like, oh, what are your conflicts? And I'm like, well, here's this. And then he's like, uh, I wanted you to audition for the lead. I'm like, you never told me that. And it was for a show called... Communication. Am I, am I allowed to say? I'm not probably will. Rock of Ages. And Drew, he's a young 20-year-old guy who's trying to get, become a musician, yada, yada, yada. So that's the one he wanted you yeah, to audition but he for. but you never told me that. You never told <gasps> me that. A, a rock star? Yeah. You totally can pull off oh, yeah. rock star. I want to be rock oh, star. Oh, my gosh. Better. And again, it's a jukebox <laughs> musical. So it's literally all 80s songs, all 80s rock and roll that I grew up with. Like, Oh, Sherry, um... You want to get her alive? Else will do it? I don't know. But That'd be really cool. Because because I was missing six weeks. Again, eighties music. I grew up with it. I had all the songs memorized before I even started rehearsals. Wait, you did it? I auditioned for it. Okay. I tried for it, and then I told him like, "Listen, I will put in the work. I, I can memorize. I have the songs all all the songs memorized. I can learn another show while doing." Mamma Mia, because I'm performing. I already have it all memorized. Because it's a light and fluffy show and not mm -hmm. like a deep, profound show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's deep messages there, and if you really look into it, but it, besides the point. Yeah. Um, but he was like, he's like, I want you, but I can't convince the casting, the other committee members. 
And who they went with, well, um, it was a fun show. <laughs> what does that even mean? I didn't see it. I have no qualms. That's okay. It was fun. I, I, I got, again, feature dancer role. and um, So you were in it, but you just yeah. went the lead. Yeah. And then when I jumped in, I knew all my songs already. So, because again... I know 80s rock. Dang. And the See, dancing was easy as well. Well, not, how do I say this? It was easy to pick up because it was fun, but it was definitely intense dancing. And then I had to dance solo and everything like that. But then the person who got cast was. About like that. About like that. Very impressive, apparently. Dang. And I'm like, <sighs> and there's very few times where I'm like, yeah. But I definitely was thinking that the entire time. Oh, that's so... That's so and so, wild. again, I, and I, again, even though I was perfect for the role, and definitely could have done it, even with being, missing six weeks of rehearsal, they didn't believe that they wanted someone else, and they... Yeah. That's it, it showed. But, to be fair, in the long run, I'm okay, because... It, let's just say it was a learning experience. So... Today, that ends our conversation for what is director looking for and... Yes. Be, just, just checking the bullet points. Like, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Checking the bullet points. Um, I think up next, we'll be having, we'll be talking about how to prepare for your audition, uh, parts one and two, because it's multifaceted. There's so many things. As long as that took for us to go over directors, there's twice as many for auditions. We'll have to... We'll figure it out. This is um, this. These are important conversations, though, mm -hmm. and important questions for people to consider mm -hmm. if you are wanting to audition, do, be audition cast. and yeah. be cast. And sometimes we know why, and sometimes we just don't, and that it sucks. And what it ultimately comes down to is there is always another show. There's always another audition, and keep trying because you never know when it's going to break. That's the honest answer. Well, join us for our next video. Uh, thanks for being here tonight. We will talk to you later. Peace.